I'm Agdi Karadu, I'm a master student at the of Alcipaya, and I'm going to talk about um, the welfare in the combinatorial clock auction. This is joint work with Adrian Beta from McGill University. So the combinatorial clock auction is an ascending price auction. That is the, the, the first phase of a procedure designed by Ausubel, Plankton and Bilbao. It is used to sell spectrum. In practice, this is uh, one of the most used and most successful spectrum mechanisms. And I'm going to describe the CCA by an example. So here we have six items, A, B, C, D, E, and F, and three bidders. So every bidder makes a combinatorial bid. They, they choose a subset of the item. We have a starting price um, on each item. And if an item uh, belongs to more than one bid, we have excess demand on that item and the price is incremented. So here we have excess demand on B, C, and D. And we keep going, so they make another bid. And so here we have excess demand on A and C. So the price on those item is incremented. And here the bids are disjoint. So we stop the auction, and this is the final allocation. So the green bidder pays five and get A and C, and the, the blue bidder pays four, the red bidder pays one and get E. So this is the, the idea of the mechanism. Now I want to be a little more precise with the model. So we have a set of M items and, and bidders. And for every item and set, subset of, uh, every subset of item and every agent, we have a valuation that is VI of S. And the, the welfare of an allocation is just the sum of the valuation of, the, of each bidder. So, um, we have a, a previous work in the SODA paper of 2016 by Busquet et al. that showed that uh, three conditions was necessary to have a good welfare with this, the CCA. First, we need to uh, use all the bids uh, that, are, uh, that are made during the auction and not only the final bids. And so you take all the bids done in all the round and compute the revenue maximizing allocation. The second important condition is uh, the price increments. You have to use uh, a price increment that is linear in demand. I will. Uh, explain a, a bit more this condition in the next slide. And the last condition is a condition that was already in the Porter and et al. paper in 2003, and it has to deal with the stopping rule. Uh, in my example, I stopped the auction as soon as uh, the bid are disjoint, and you may want to continue and to continue the auction if there is a conflict between the final allocation and the terminal assignment. So with the three conditions, we have uh, a nice result. In a K demand auction, that means that uh, the bidders want uh, bundles of size at most K. With truthful bidding, um, we have a welfare ratio of at most K square log N log M square. This is uh, a good ratio because it's polynomial in log M and log M square. But for some reason, it's not uh, completely satisfying. And the main reason is, so right, the welfare ratio is the worst case ratio between the welfare of the CCA allocation and the welfare of the optimal allocation. Uh, the main reason why it's not satisfying is that um, with the linear increment rule, the price is incremented even if um, the item appears in exactly one bid. Like in, if we see the increment rule as a function of the demand, uh, in my previous example, the price is incremented only if there is excess demand, only if demand is at least two. And in, in the theorem, it's actually linear in demand. So with uh, the previous example here, item A, E, and F uh, are also incremented. And it might, it's a bit weird and it might be a problem because um, you may uh, want to strategically reduce your demand so you can pay uh, 
a lower price. This is called a demand reduction, and it's pretty common in auction. So the question is, can we choose a, a better equivalent rule, which is which tries only on the excess demand and still have some good welfare guarantee? And the answer is no. For any increment rule, such that the price rise only on the excess demand, the welfare ratio is uh, at least root M. And this is even in the unit demand case. So uh, this is the example that show the theorem, but uh, I'm first going to give uh, an intuition. The, what's a bad example of, of, of the CCA is when um, an item, a high valuable item, is not allocated at all because uh, a small number of bidder push the price of this item really high, and those bidder end up winning some other item, and nobody can overbid them. So this is what happened in, in this example. So here we have n square items, and n plus two bidder. We have one bidder per row. Uh, they, value, they value only the item of their row, so the red bidder only care about the, the item in the first row. He value n for the third item, n minus one for the second, etc. And the two blue bidder value uh, have positive value for all the items. They value two n for the item of the first column, two n minus one for the second column, and so on. And so, what happened in this auction? Uh, if we have truthful bidding, so during the first one, they, they, everybody bid for his most valuable item, that is the item of the first column. The price is incremented here. And now the red bidder has the same valuation for his first item and his second item, so he may choose the second one. And the two blue bidder bid for the second item of the first column. So after n round, the price of the first column is one. And the two blue bidder are the only remaining on the first column. They push up the price up to two. And then they, they move to the second column. So here, uh, the price rises. And what's important here is that the red bidder has the same valuation for all three items. So he might choose the third one. And uh, what's important is that um, every row bidder will never ma make a positive bid. They will make a bid zero and then move to the item on the right. So this is a problem because at the end, uh, the two blue bidder fill everything. And so this is a credible CCA allocation, which has uh, only root M welfare because uh, all the row bidder get their least favorite item. And the optimal allocation is everything gets high value. And this is about M uh, welfare, and so the welfare ratio is about through them. So this is a really bad example, but we can actually do worse. And but, uh, this works for every, not just only for the basic increment rule, but for any rule such that the price rises only under excess demand. So we still have some welfare guarantee with the basic rule. So in the general case, the welfare ratio is at most uh, M. And in the unit demand case, the, well, the welfare ratio is at most M at 2 over 3. Those two bounds are tight. And the, the first theorem is uh, quite easy, but the second is one of our main results. I'm not going to explain the proof, but um, the those bonds are really bad, so we might want to still use the, the increment rule with, that is linear in demand. Uh, the problem is uh, the truthfulness assumption is not credible at all if, because you, you, you might face some demand reduction problem. So we might want to get rid of the truthfulness, and that's what we do here. So we can do that by making two assumptions. The first one is no overbidding. You cannot make a bid if you have negative utility. And you cannot leave the auction too early. That's uh, a bit informal. But um, for example, if you value an item 1,000, you can't leave the auction if the price 
of that item is just uh, like 10. Um, and with those two assumptions, uh, the bidder can do whatever they want. We still have uh, some welfare guarantee. So if the increment rule is constant, uh, in the unit demand case, the welfare is at, at most, uh, the welfare ratio is at most root m log m, and in the linear increment case, the welfare ratio is at most m log m at one over three. Uh, that's our other main result. And this is really general because uh, the bidder can do really whatever they want. Uh, it's much stronger than just an equilibrium result or uh, the truthfulness that we had previously. So the idea of the proof is um, to compare the revenue of the CCA with the revenue of a greedy allocation. Uh, that idea was already in the pre paper by, in the SODA paper of 2016. So the idea is um, the CCA allocation maximizes the revenue uh, given the CCA bid. So if we do this greedy algorithm, so we just take the highest bid, remove the item and the, and the bidder and repeat. Uh, the revenue of this allocation is structurally lower than the revenue of the CCA. So then with the greedy allocation, we need to find a set of item S such that S is a significant part of the welfare of the optimal allocation. The value of the item in S uh, is low in the greedy allocation and the bidder who gets those it items in the optimal allocation have low value in the greedy allocation. And if, if we take an item uh, in, in that set, and if I is a, the agent who gets J in, in the optimal location, in, in a sense, that means that I should have won the item. Uh, because of the definition of S, we know that the maximum bid of I on this item is low. And because of the no early departure assumption that can be seen as a no extremely extreme risk loving uh, condition, we know that the price of that item is high at the end of the auction. So the gap must have been filled by some other agents. And in particular, if we take a th threshold C, the gap between C and, and V must have been filled by a bidder who paid more than T in the greedy allocation because otherwise he would have won the item. So the tricky part is to choose a C high enough so that only a few bidder can fill the gap and low enough so the gap is still uh, big enough. And the argument is the gap, the gap is, uh, has been filled by only a few bidder in a small number of rounds, so it cannot be too big. So uh, the technical part of the proof, this is just a, a sketch, but the, the technical part of the proof is to find such a uh, set S and such a threshold C. And this is done by using a technical lemma that might be interesting on its own. It's purely analytical. So we have two functions, uh, F and G such that f is decreasing and since such that the sum of f is a k fraction, at most a k fraction of the sum of g. And the lemma is there exists a couple c and p such that uh, this area, the sum of uh, g minus c uh, from p to m, is at least a log fraction of the whole sum of g. And this area here, uh, fp times f minus 1t is at most a k fraction of the sum of f. And this is uh, the technical part of, of the paper. And w what are the, the practical conclusion of what we have done? The first one is that the choice of the increment rule is really crucial if we want to achieve good welfare. In particular, uh, you may want to, to increment even if um, even if the, the demand is uh, just one, if, if you have no excess demand. And the second one is that the stopping rule is really important too, because the longer the, lo the, the auction lasts, uh, the less the auction is sensitive to strategic behavior. And that's it. Thanks.
Yeah. Uh, but I think what you're analyzing is uh, just the first phase. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then the quarter paper allowed multiple things. So people in general, in theory, could reveal their demand sets, so all, all their demands at a particular price. Yeah, yeah, it's just the first option. You make the assumption it's a single bit per round, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Which, which it's, it's not like the Porter version. It's, it's more like the first phase of the, of the usable version of, of this. Question. What changes are what goes wrong when you allow this on item set, uh, like uh, allow overbidding? When you allow overbidding, uh, you still have uh, the same bound but for revenue, and you may have poor welfare because if you bid high on an item you don't want, you may just get it, but this is poor welfare, but the revenue is still good. <laughs>